Hey everybody, uh, for December I have been, uh, I made a, a goal to make something new every day. Um, and so a couple days ago I actually uh, did my first experimenting with processing, which is this tool that you basically make art with code. It's kind of a cool tool. Um, it's really my first time deep diving into it. And so I thought it'd be uh, fun to kind of talk through a little bit uh, of what I've learned with processing. I am a, a, a newbie, I'm a beginner, so if I, I'm wrong in this video, please don't hold it against me. I just feel like the, the building blocks of what you can do with this tool are so exciting that I wanted to put this together and share it and uh, maybe spark some interest for uh, anybody else who uh, is interested in the, in the intersection between art and audio and code. I mean, that to me is like the sweet spot for me. So I'm really excited about this. Um, so the goal of this video is to show you, walk you through kind of what I've uh, learned so far. And so to get started, what you'll need is you'll need to install processing, okay? Um, I won't, there are plenty of guides out there on how to do this, but you can download it, you can get it running. You'll need a couple of other tools, I think, in order for the audio uh, component to this. Uh, specifically, there's a, a library called Minim that I'm going to be working with. Um, uh, installing it is not that hard. You can import it into processing. Again, there are uh, guides that walk you through that, so I'll save that for uh, another video. And then I believe you need FFmpeg as well, which is a command line tool that uh, I believe the Minim library uses to make the MP3 files that are going to be the output that that gets uh, created. Um, if you're not making any uh, output audio, then you might not need it. Um, so let's get started. I wanna jump right into this, uh, into what I'm working on currently. So let me just show you what this looks like so far. I've got a little audio clip and we're gonna be processing the audio and creating some visualizations off of that audio. And then I'll walk you through it a little bit. So. I'm using uh, Cymatics from Nigel Stanford. This is the end of the song. You can see we've got the bass registering here. Uh, the bass is the red, the mids are the yellow, and then the, the highs are the green. And then we've got this sort of like spectral analyzer that's running across the top, the little line that's uh, being impacted. Uh, the thickness of the line actually is changing based on the intensity of the song. And then you'll see some numbers across the top, right? You've got the uh, global intensity. There's this sort of intensity of the lows. There's the intensity of the mids. And then there's the intensity of the highs and you can see this song is pretty as it's building the the bass is going to start kicking in here a little bit right and then you have the mids coming in here and then the highs are are registering there so all of this stuff is responding in real time as a matter of fact i can i can pause it right and so you can kind of see this is a snapshot of this particular step in the song i can unpause it right so then there's going to be this big drop that comes in. See, and everything kind of like, boom, all the way across. So I'll exit there. Great song. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen it before, check it out. It's fantastic. So the, um, let me walk you through what we've got on the program here. Uh, so in a nutshell, I'm importing the Minim library and the analysis so that I can do some analyzing of the audio file. Uh, I'm defining the variables for the Minim, for the audio player component of the Minim library, and then for FFT. The FFT uh, component allows me to evaluate the spectrum of the song. And I'll, I'm gonna talk about that more in more detail in just a few minutes. Um, I'm also, at the beginning, I'm kind of defining some variables. So I'm doing a couple things here. If you were to look at the spectrum of the, most of the songs that you listen to, there's a lot at the top that we can actually hear. And so I'm actually just dropping that out and, and only taking sort of the, the audible parts of the song because it doesn't really make sense to evaluate those uh, upper parts that aren't being used. So I'm creating a variable that is sort of like the the ceiling for the lows, the ceiling for the high or for the mids, and then a ceiling for the the high. 
um, and I will be pulling those out a little bit later on in uh, my code. The other thing I've done is I've created a low, mid, and high score, and, and basically what I'm trying to do is I'm calculating the intensity of the lows, the mids, and the highs. And then I'm also, I've got a variable for tracking the previous frames score, uh, uh, scores for the low, mid, and high. And that way, if I wanna do any ramping, which I'm not doing in this program, but if I ever wanted to do any ramping where I'm like ramping down the values, it would be helpful for me to know like, okay, the previous frame value was this. So if it was up or low, and, and, and so that can come, into, come in handy for um, certain graphical applications later on, but I won't deal with them now. I'm also doing the decay rate. Uh, again, if we're doing any kind of ramping, if we wanted to keep the value over time, that decay rate will l let me set uh, how, how quickly I want that to decay. Again, I'm not doing that much right now, um, or I'm actually not using it all, so I'll leave that for another time. I'm also, I, I've defined an intensity multiplier. Uh, I was finding that as I was working with lower intensity songs, uh, it was helpful to have sort of a global variable to say, hey, multiply the overall intensity by this number because different songs were different. So that's what that's for. I've also just defined these color variables for use in the program. Um, I have an idea of wanting to come up with different color palettes, so I've been playing around with that. Uh, so, so with processing, there's generally like two things to think about uh, in a program. One is the sort of setup, the settings and the setup. That's the thing, you do that one time. And then you have uh, the draw function, and the draw function will run basically one time each cycle. So it's going to be, uh, if I'm running at 60 frames per second, this thing will be happening, this draw function will be run through 60 times in one second, or at least it will try to. Sometimes if you're doing a lot, it'll slow down. Um, again, that's a, a different problem to deal with. But, but by and large, it's good to think of these things in two buckets. What are we gonna run at the beginning of the program? And then what are we gonna run every single time we, uh, we run our cycle? And so here I'm setting uh, a pixel density because I'm on a retina display. So I'm setting the pixel density to the display density, which is two. I'm also setting anti-aliasing, which means there's some smoothing on all of the graphics just to make it look nicer. I'm also uh, electing to run it full screen. Um, I can set it in a window, but then it bumps the window all to the center. So for now, I'm just running it full screen. Uh, then we, we run a setup and I'm telling it to set the frame rate to 60, which is a little bit redundant because that's my screen uh, rate, but I found it's just e easier to calculate um, some things. Um, and then I'm setting the background to gray. Uh, I'm loading in some uh, a text font and there's some great uh, tutorials about how you can take your fonts from your own system and render out bitmaps. Actually, processing has a, a tool for doing that where you can... Um, I can't seem to find it now, but you can actually create a font, a little snapshot of a font based off of a font that's on your system. So I'm doing that because I'm, I have that text displaying at the top. Okay, now we initialize the minim library, and we do a couple of important things. I'm loading a song, so I'm using uh, this, I actually took a part of the song, I'm not loading the whole song. I'm loading that file from this file location, and I'm telling it to use 1,024 um, blocks, essentially. Um, and, and the best way to think about this is when, if you were to envision a waveform, uh, an audio waveform, at any given moment, it's, if you were to freeze that, like we had our spectral analyzer, right? We, we you see that line that's being drawn, that, that, is a reflection of the audio that's being played. And the resolution of that audio, that's what this number is. So if, for example, I were to lower that way down, the, the, the actual waveform would be much blockier. And so it would sound, I guess the best way to describe it, it would sound kind of tinny or canny. And so the higher that number is, the better the resolution is, the more detail you're getting in your audio. But of course, that's more information. Um, and more things to process. 
For us, that number is important because that's what we're using to calculate a lot of different things. And um, the intensity, the um, we'll walk through exactly what it is that we're uh, basing off that number. Okay, then we're also uh, populating a variable FFT, and with that, we're actually loading the FFT function from the minimum library, and we're passing it the buffer size of the song and the sample rate of the song, and that's how we're actually calculating that FFT number. And again, that's a, a snapshot of the, the, uh, the waveform at, 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 at any given time. That's what's gonna allow us to go through it. Uh, and then we start playing the song. Okay, so that's the setup. That's what we do at the beginning. We say, here's all the things we do to start. And then each time we cycle through, here's what's happening. We're setting the background to gray. That's important because if we didn't do that, the previous graphics would be left over. And sometimes that's a cool effect. You get like a kind of a smearing effect. But in this case, I don't want that. I actually want each frame to, to be clear. So we're setting the background to gray. Uh, I'm setting no stroke. That's going to uh, that's going to be important because when I'm uh, drawing boxes, I don't want to have a stroke around them. Then what we're doing is we're moving our evaluation of the song ahead one step. So FFT has a, uh, a function called forward, and we're basically saying move the song one step forward. And we're going we're gonna to use that then to evaluate what our waveform looks like for this particular cycle. Okay. Uh, then we save any old values. Again, that's for ramping, which we're not really doing. We're just capturing it right here. I'm resetting the score values because again, I want the score values to start off at zero. This will be important for uh, frames two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. Then what, we, what we're doing here is we're calculating the lows. And what I'm doing is I'm looping through the FFT um, the, 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 the full FFT, and then I'm essentially carving out the lows, right? So I'm basically pulling out the lows and I'm saying, okay, we're gonna run through every single one of the bands that are in my low, that's in that low range, and then I'm gonna take that number and I'm gonna assign it to this score low variable, right? And I, I, I'm doing something a little bit unusual here, you'll see. I'm, so I calculate the lows, the mids, the highs, but, but then as I'm assigning it to the, to the variable, I'm multiplying it by this magic number, really, and then by the intensity multiplier. And you'll notice that the low, the mid, and the high are all slightly different. And what I found in trying a bunch of different samples, that lows tend to um, have a much higher intensity score, and maybe it's just the songs that I've been uh, playing through them. Um, and so what I do is I actually reduce the score a little bit of lows, mids stay about the same, and then boost the highs a little bit because the intensity, that number doesn't uh, seem to be as high, and there's probably some reason for that. But to sort of uh, adjust for that perception, that audio perception, uh, the intensity, I'm actually running that little uh, calculation there as well. I probably could have put those variables at the top, but um, then this is that ramping uh, math. I'm essentially taking the old score and I'm saying, hey, if it's if it that old score is greater than this than the than the the score uh, the intensity score of the low, then we're going to like subtract the old uh, the the score low. We're going to basically put in that uh, decay rate. So we're uh, easing our ramping based on that decay rate that I mentioned uh, above. Then I'm creating a variable which is essentially the global score. So that's if I wanted to use this number to say, what's the overall intensity of the song itself, like all of it together. Um, and uh, I've generally seen that number be from zero to a thousand. It, it, it depends on a lot of things. But um, okay, so now into the drawing itself. So I set the rectangle mode to corners. That just means that I'm, uh, it changes the way that I, I place it. And then I'm doing a little bit of positioning. So I, I've created this uh, integer uh, called three column and I'm taking the width of the screen and I'm dividing it by three. This is gonna come in handy because remember I'm drawing those boxes for the, the, the lows, the mids and the highs. So those three boxes, um, 
uh, I want those widths to, to uh, be calculated based off the width of the screen so that if I'm full screen or if I'm at a small screen, they're all going to be sized uh, relative to the actual uh, width of the screen itself. So then we start populating the, the box, the lows box, and I'm essentially saying, okay, the color of this low box is going to be, this is RGB. So the, um, uh, actually, no, that's not right. Yeah, it is RGB. So it's actually RGBA, I believe. And what that means is score low is the red value, zero for the green, zero for the blue, and then 255 means the intensity or the, uh, the opacity, sorry, is going to be set to full. So 255, it's zero to 255. So the score low is um, that number that, so basically the intensity of the red is going to be is going to depend on the intensity of the lows. So you'll if you noticed when we play it, that it'll actually get more or less red depending on how strong it is. We're also setting the height based on the intensity there as well. So you can see uh, these are just coordinates. I'm setting it to zero, which is all the way to the left, and then I'm saying the height is going to be uh, the the height of the screen minus score low. And so uh, essentially I'm taking the height of the screen and I'm subtracting the, uh, the low score and that's giving me the starting the position, to, uh, the top leftmost position of this box. And then I'm saying the right hand side is gonna be column three. So that's gonna give me that one third of the screen. And then it's gonna go the full height, which is the bottom of the screen. And so essentially my box is going to be the, the, the calculated based on the height and I do that for the mid there's a little bit more math there that lets me jump over to the center column and then the high box I'm doing the same thing but I'm over at that third column and so again the end result that you see we'll watch it again that you know the math see how they were like black down at the bottom this green one you can see it's pretty dark at the bottom because it doesn't have much intensity but the higher up we go the brighter it gets anything again over 255 it's just going to be you know it's just going to translate it as full intensity so that's why once you get up higher you don't really notice it. it's only when you get in the lower numbers that you don't see it or you see that change in color okay then the next thing we're doing is we're creating these spectral lines um I'm setting a blend mode to add, and that just means that when those boxes, when they get up over those that spectral analyzer line, that add, that add mode will ensure that you're still going to see the lines there. Okay, so we're setting the stroke to white. And uh, by the way, the add mode clips to white, which means that when the color goes up over top of it, that white line is always going to be white, no matter what the color is. Then I'm setting the, the, the weight of the stroke based on the overall intensity of the, the song, like the, the, that global score number. So that's the intensity of the, that particular frame. And I'm dividing it by 250. Again, that's a bit of a, uh, just a random number to kind of keep the, I, I don't want the, the width of the stroke to be such a, a, a drastic change. Um, again, if you could imagine, okay, if that score global number, we were seeing it in the hundreds, sometimes in the thousands. If I were to just leave that like it is, and I were to run it, you'll notice what's happening. That, see how it's already really large? Yeah, and then it just gets crazy, and it just kind of, it's not really that interesting. I mean, I guess it's interesting, but it's not the uh, effect that I was going for. So I'll, I'll put that back to 250. So that's the weight of the stroke. The other thing that we're doing is uh, I'm just setting it to be rounded. I honestly haven't seen much difference there. I was hoping to get that spectral, the curves to be rounded, but I think we've got so many segments that you just don't really notice it. But again, I'm learning, could be wrong there. Okay, next thing that we're doing is um, uh, creating a variable called foo, and then I'm putting the size, uh, the song mix size in there, and then then I'm creating a scale number based on that. So this is important because um, in order to accurately draw that spectral analyzer all the way across, if I just if I just essentially used the size of the width of the spectral analyzer, it would be 1024. And so if the width of my screen was 1024, it would fill it. 
if, if the width of my screen is 640, it would go past it and, and it would be clipping at the end. So what I had to do in order to make it responsive, I had to essentially divide the, 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 that number, that 1024, or actually if it was 2048 or whatever it is, I needed to divide that by the actual width of the screen so I could calculate a, uh, a scale number. And then that scale number, you'll see I actually use that here. So essentially I'm, I'm looping through every single one of those bandwidth, so the, the 1024 frames. So I'm going through each one of those and I'm drawing a line based off of that, okay? And you can see I'm actually multiplying I, so, so we'd start with one and we would normally draw that line, but I'm actually saying, no, instead of making it one, make it one times this scale. And so again, if my screen is 2048 and my uh, the FFT size was 1024, then that scale number would be two. And so we would be drawing, uh, instead of the line being one, it would be two. Um, and then I'm calculating the height uh, there as well. I'm essentially saying the, um, you know, we're, we're positioning it halfway in the middle of the screen. Um, and then we're doing a little bit of uh, additional math there, but essentially that's what's uh, presenting those, that spectral analyzer in the middle of the screen. And then finally, I switch back to the normal blend mode because I don't want that impacting the boxes that are being drawn when we cycle back through again because this that's persists. Okay, uh, I'm setting a few of these. Uh, the next step is I'm gonna be just displaying the value of the scores. So what I do is I, um, that actually, these should be down here, I think. Okay. So I'm displaying the value of the scores. In order to do that, I'm setting a padding number. So um, I, because I reuse this value again. Um, I'm also, you'll notice because I have global in here, I need four columns. So I'm doing that same math as before, but I've created a, a four column variable. And then uh, the text works very similar to the way graphics do. I say uh, the fill color is going to be 255. That means my text is going to be white. The text size is going to be 24 points. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm say, uh, putting a label out there, intensity global, intensity low, intensity mids, intensity high. And then I'm just displaying the, the value of that variable. And then I'm doing some positioning based on the padding and on the columns that I did before. And that's essentially it. Um, again, the, I'm really excited. There's a couple of other things down here I'll just mention. Um, I can press P and pause the song and stop the loop. Um, I can hit R if I get to the end of the song. I can press R and it'll restart it. And then I can hit Q, we'll just exit it. So those are just some useful uh, functions there. I'm excited um, specifically about a couple of things. Uh, I'm, I'm interested about the perceived audio intensity because I've been playing around with a number of different things. As a matter of fact, um, I can show you, um, if we play a different song, you'll notice that, that, that the, so there's some change there um, in how that gets picked up. Um, I've been, I have a test MP3, let me run that. And that's a good, that's a good demonstration of how we're picking up the different lows, mids, highs, right? But, but what's interesting to me is you could see that's not even. Um, and it's kind of like working with colors. A lot of it has to do with perception. So if I can't hear bass too well, and I'm like, boy, it doesn't, it says the intensity is this number, but I'm not hearing it at that level. It could be my speakers, it could be my ears. So that's kind of an interesting thing to experiment. I wanna do a little bit more research on what people have found about um, perception of intensity and then what that means for how it gets translated into numbers. And I think that's the, the next part is like what to actually do with those song values. Um, and so uh, I'll link to it, but if you if you haven't seen it, I actually um, used an example that somebody else had shared of flying through a tunnel and like the rotation of the cubes is based on the that intensity number. So if the bass gets really loud, we're gonna rotate these cubes a lot more 
And so there's a lot of real neat potential here. I'm very excited to work with it more in depth. Now that I feel like I have the basics of evaluating the song itself, I'm really interested to see what I can do next. Like, what could we actually draw with this? Like, what would be a meaningful way to capture the music and then translate that onto the screen? You know, maybe um, instead of just looking at lows, mids, and highs, I could be evaluating each one of those 1,024 things, and maybe I could draw a dot per band on the screen and make the size of those change. Again, again there's just a lot of different things. If you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Um, I'm excited about uh, excited about all the possibilities. So, anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, hit me up. Uh, I'll answer them if I can. Thanks for watching.